Hello everybody and welcome to this video in our series about graph data science. In this video we're going to learn about centrality algorithms which are one of the traditional categories of graph algorithms. Uh, so centrality algorithms are used to try and work out what are the important nodes in their graph and there are lots of different ways of, of determining uh, importance. So it could be that it's based on the number of connections as in degree centrality or perhaps it's just which node is the most easily reachable within a graph or subgraph. Uh, or perhaps what we're interested in is finding which node has the most control over flow uh, in a graph. Uh, or perhaps it's the transitive importance of a node that's important to us. So let's go through those one by one. So degree centrality, I think this is probably the simplest uh, of the algorithms. And the idea here is that we're counting the number of incoming or outgoing relationships from a node uh, and we're using it to find popular nodes in a graph. Um, and so that could be used to, to find something like, like, which is the most popular Twitter user? So maybe we find out oh, Katy Perry's got 45 million uh, followers, and that would be a way of using degree centrality to work out who are the important users on, uh, on the Twitter uh, social graph. Uh, or perhaps it's used for detecting fraudsters from leg legitimate users in an online auction site. So perhaps they're doing way more transactions than a normal user would. Uh, the next one is closeness centrality. Uh, now here we, it's a way of detecting nodes that are able to spread information efficiently through a subgraph. Uh, and let's just quickly have a look at the formula that's used to compute this. Um, so what we're working out is we want to know like what's the, what are the number of hops from each node to every other node in the graph and then we're going to sum those up uh, and then we'll divide it by one. And so what we get is what we call the average farness uh, of a node where a farness of one would mean that you can reach every node with one hop. So there's a direct link from you to every node. And then a, a lower number would mean that there's mu it's much f f you're much further away. So the higher numbers are better here. Uh, and this algorithm can be used to help maybe detect individu individuals in favorable positions to control and acquire information uh, in an organization. Or it could be used uh, to maybe as a heuristic for estimating arrival time in a, in a package delivery network. Uh, between the centrality is the next one we're going to look at. Uh, and again, here we're looking at it's a way of detecting the amount of influence that a node has over the flow of information in a graph. And it's often sometimes useful for finding out like which are bridge nodes, like which ones are sitting uh, on the intersection of lots of different subgraphs. If we took our Twitter example again, maybe it's there's a community of people talking about Java and a community of people talking about Neo4j and we're trying to find out like what's the person sitting on that intersection. Uh, and again, there's a formula that, that we can use to compute this. And so what we're saying here is that we want to uh, work out for every pair of nodes in, in the uh, a complete case uh, for each pair of nodes, find out how many shortest paths there are between those nodes, and then find out how many times this each node, uh, a specific node, fits on that path. So we're trying to see, like, for a particular node, how many times are you sitting on the shortest path between other pairs of nodes in the graph? Uh, now, between the centrality, the, the complete version is, is generally takes very, very long to run because it's got to compute the uh, shortest path between all pairs of uh, nodes in the whole graph. Uh, which doesn't really scale to big graphs, and so you'll usually use an approximate solution here. Uh, and again, it's useful find it for finding influences, and they're not necessarily the people that are sitting in management positions. Uh, it can also be useful for finding the transfer points in a, in a network, such as an electrical grid, uh, or perhaps for microblogs to figure out how can they spread their, their blog uh, around Twitter into other, into other subgraphs. And then the last one that we're going to look at is called PageRank, and this one slightly different to the others and this time we're trying to find the transitive influence we just we don't just want to know um like our uh, influence on our own we want to know like are we connected to other uh, important nodes uh, and so this one originates from the google search engine uh, and it can be used for recommendations so twitter have a, a, a use a variant of this called personalized page rank uh, for one of their recommendation systems uh, or it can be used in uh, is often used in anomaly and fraud detection systems uh, and there are a couple of variants of this uh, this algorithm as well um, so I guess you could consider actually page rank is a variant of eigenvector centrality where we're, we're interested in the direction of the relationships and then there's another variant called uh, article rank which is similar but is, is quite a bit better suited to some use cases so that's the end of this video on centrality algorithms and hopefully you've now got a better understanding of how to find the important nodes in a graph.